Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a great day. A lot of you have been linking me to this video. Apple's new fix-it policy is not the end for right to repair. And I thought we'd discuss this a little bit. A lot of people have asked what I think of it. As you could see, they did interview people like Kyle Wiens at iFixit. And the man, the legend, Nathan Proctor. He is an awesome dude that works at US Perg, and we have partnered up to try and organize lobbying efforts in many different states, and he is excellent at what he does. So the first thing is the title of the video. I really appreciate this title. Apple's new fix-it policy is not the end for right to repair. One of the things that I recognized about Apple's past program, the IRP program, Independent Repair Provider Program, is that it really did seem like a PR stunt. In the beginning, I was very hopeful, I was very optimistic, I was very happy. I thought, this is Apple putting out an olive branch. And then when the program came out, you couldn't get parts unless you had the customer device and their info and their address and all of this in your possession, so you couldn't stock things. You couldn't get access to LCD screens by themselves, which make the repairs economically viable. You could only buy the entire display assembly. You couldn't get access to iPhone charge ports. You couldn't get access to a number of different things that are necessary to be able to do what it is that I do. You couldn't get access to board schematics. You couldn't get access to chips. So, you know, 99% of the videos you see on my channel of me fixing Apple products utilize parts, manuals, or chips that I cannot get via that program. And this program seems very, very based on that. And I, again, I am very cautiously, hopefully optimistic that they do change things and that when this program comes out, it is more useful than the IRP program. But from the limited information we have now, it seems like it is based on that. And if that's the case, then this really does seem like a way to get out in front of legislation, but by looking like you're doing something without actually doing something you know you put a couple of parts in a website you put a couple of useless manuals on you know here's that open the bottom case of this and then you claim oh yeah we're, we're all done here you show the legislator and that's it and as i've said many times even regardless of anything with apple this is kind of something that's happening across almost all industries so it's not really and so i appreciate this title apple's new fix it policy is not the end for right to repair correct and I appreciate it and one of the things that I noticed actually more than this video and that's really what I wanted to discuss here and just it demonstrates how much work we have to do to really roll back the culture to a time when it was acceptable to fix our own stuff was this video this is actually about a month old and this was referred to me by the algorithm after I was done with that video so it says here from CNBC Apple announces new self-service repair program without voiding warranty. And the gentleman came on and he said in a really enthusiastic way that, you know, this program now you're not going to void your warranty when you fix your phone. And this is something that kind of raises the eyebrow of many people who actually do repairs. This is not news because you were never voiding the warranty when you worked on your own stuff. And so many people are unaware of this because our culture has shifted so far away from repair, which is what I wanted to highlight here. So the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act says that the burden of proof is on the manufacturer to prove that when you worked on your own device, you did something to screw it up. So for instance, if you replace the hard drive with a solid state drive on your laptop, you did not void your warranty simply because you opened it. Now, if you replace the hard drive in your laptop with an atom bomb instead of an SSD, and then your laptop blows up, the manufacturer can then say, we are voiding your warranty because you replaced your hard drive with an atom bomb instead of a two and a half inch SSD. This is what caused the damage. This was caused by you. We don't ship our products with atom bombs in it. So therefore, we are avoiding your warranty but it's always been on the manufacturer and stuff like these stickers that say warranty void if removed are actually illegal and have been illegal since the 70s and the FTC had to remind many manufacturers that when they say that your warranty is void if you simply open the product that that is illegal so the fact that somebody actually can get on the news and I'm, I don't even really want to bash this guy because so many people are under this this, this uh, misconception it's really kind of culturally ingrained at this point so I really don't want it to seem like I'm picking on him but you know when he goes on the news and says now you're not gonna avoid your warranty when you work on an Apple product I mean this is not something that is fact-checked because it's just kind of assumed to be true. It's like, I don't fact-check myself. I don't Google or check out Wikipedia before I say the sky is blue. It's just one of those things that we've all just kind of come as a society to assume and accept is the truth. And it's kind of like the same thing here. Like you know, We just assume that if you open your device for any reason that you have voided the warranty if you work on it yourself. You could work on your own Apple product without voiding the warranty. Uh, to, to my knowledge, from the time that Apple was created as a company, 
to now. I've had customers come into my store before who qualified for Apple extended warranty programs because they had a model with a bad graphics chip or something like that. And they'll say, well, no, they said that it doesn't. I, I, my warranty is void because I changed my hard drive to an SSD. And, you know, I'll have to print all of this stuff out. I'll, you know, I used to, like, print out the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. This is actually before they had this policy with... Uh, with, uh, you know, where the FTC came out and reminded everybody in the news, by the way, that, you know, that practice is illegal. But, you know, I'll have to, I would remind them, you know, by the way, that's illegal. I mean, they, they cannot do that. They cannot claim that because you replaced your hard drive with an SSD or that you replaced the battery in your phone that you don't have a warranty. Now, if they want to say when you replace the battery in your device, you knocked off this little filter called the gas gauge filter right next to the battery connector, therefore, no warranty. You broke it. Or when you replace your hard drive, again, you put an atom bomb in there instead of an an SSD, so that's on you. But the proof is always on them. There's a long way to go when it comes to right to repair. Even if Apple were to do a full 180 and give me every single thing that I need, and just something tells me this program's not going to do that, but even if that were actually the case, you have to understand when it comes to um, home appliances, when it comes to automotive, when it comes to everything else, that really, when it comes to tractors, when it comes to so many different industries, that we're still in the same boat with all those other industries. So even if I got everything I want, there really still is a long way to go. Because again, medical devices, tractors, cars, all these other industries have the exact same problem. When hospitals are replacing entire operating tables that cost $36,000 because a $500 motor has gone bad, um, that that really, again, it, this is all about a lot more than just me, and I appreciate the CNBC title that reflects this. So that's it for today. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, hope you learned something.